Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to episode 2 of Alex Likes to Knit. I'm Alex and I like to knit, so um, yeah, I guess let's get started. I have um, a few finished objects from January, so if you haven't been here before, I'm gonna do a monthly podcast. So it's right at the beginning of February. Today is February 2nd as I'm filming. So I'm going to share three finished objects that I finished in January and everything that I have that is in progress that is carrying over into February. I think we have five projects. Um, a few are kind of almost done. And I'm also going to talk about um, a little bit more of my plans for February, the books that I have read in January, and a few things that I'm planning to read in February. And yeah, that's about it. Um, let's start with my finished objects. So the first thing that I finished was my only, or one of my only like um, works in progress from last podcast that was my anchor socks that I was knitting for my mom. Um, I have shipped them off to her so I will put a picture right here. I loved, loved, loved how they came out. Um, I think that she really likes them. Uh, my sister took a video of her like opening them. Um, yeah, the color work came out pretty um, smooth. I had done my own like chart and kind of taken a few little things from some other patterns. Um, she really likes green and she really likes anchors so I was really happy with those and I think she said that the size came out pretty good and I have good notes on how I did the size for her because I mean she's my mom I'll probably like knit socks for her again sometime. Um, my next finished object was um, another pair of colorwork socks let me show you. These these are the Blooming Lavender Socks from the uh, Charming Colorwork Socks book by Charlotte Stone. Um, she's Stone Knits on like Instagram and everything. I'm using a darker purple than I had originally intended. I had a lighter purple, but it just didn't have enough contrast with this tan color. You couldn't really see it, but I pulled, um, I had a little bit of this darker purple in my stash. So I think it's really clear that it's lavender. Um, I love this like detail on the toe. I feel like I'm gonna do this like on other socks in the future, a little like wreath. Um, I am having a little bit of an issue with these because um, I was planning on gifting these to someone, but the color work came out like a different size on the two socks. So let me see, let me hold them right next to each other so you can tell. So. Um, this one here, I did this one first, and it's very neat and even. It's not puckery or anything. I used the size, size one and a half needle, um, and I really like how this looks, but then whenever I put it on my foot, it's just a little bit tight. It's a little bit hard to get over my heel. I can get it over my heel. It's fine. I could totally wear these but I don't want to gift someone a sock that is hard to like get on and wear. That's not functional. Um, so I, this one came out a little tight. So then on this one, I thought, okay, well, I'll just hold the yarn a little bit looser. And then look, you can really see with this view how much bigger this lavender is. I was just like stretching it a little bit more, trying to hold it all a little bit looser and have a little bit of looser floats but they, they look different. But then the second sock is so much more functional. It's really easy for me to get on. It doesn't look quite as neat once it's on, but I think it still looks nice. So I was thinking, oh, maybe I should like knit a whole nother pair, another one that's tight, another one that's loose. But I think I kind of want to move on to like other color work motifs and stuff. So I've been, it's been sitting for like a few weeks at this point. I think what I want to do, I thought about this the other day and I think this is kind of my plan because I still want to gift these. I am going to like take out this guy from the top. So I worked these top down, 
but I, I think that I'll be able to pick this one up right here, cut off or take out somehow my cast on, start here and knit the color work chart backwards and then do a stretchy bind off at the end. And I think if I try to really purposefully hold it nice and like stretchy and loose that I'll get a really similar like size and effect that I have in this bigger one. And then I would really like to still gift these because they're so they're so pretty. And I don't know that they fully go with like the kind of things that I would wear them with. Um, I think these would be really cute with like Mary Jane's or something, but also like just to wear like around the house which I do wear my socks around the house, but I usually like wear my socks around the house, planning to wear them with like tennis shoes, like after or before or whatever. Um, but I think that these are gonna be like a really nice, beautiful pair of like house socks for the person who I wanna give them to. So that is my plan as of now. So um, I'll probably show them again or talk about this again um, next month, but you know, it's still a finished object. This is a pair of socks. And I put it as finished on my Ravelry, so it's just kind of the past few days that I've been thinking, like, keep thinking about them and looking at them. And I do want to rework it. It really didn't take me that long to do the color work chart because I enjoy doing color work. Um, I hold like both the yarns kind of on the same like finger and it doesn't, it doesn't take me like that long. It doesn't really take me longer. I don't think not too much longer than it would to like knit stockinette just more focus really so yeah that's my plan we'll see how that goes the yarn for these socks is um cascade heritage sock um this main color is the color camel and then i don't remember exactly what this green color is called but this is the same yarn and then the purple is something that i had in my stash it's a pearl soho yarn it's like a um I think it has some like cashmere in it it's a fingering two ply with cashmere um I'll just see if I can find it it's really soft um maybe a little bit too soft for socks but for just being part of the color work obviously it's fine it's not like gonna get a lot of wear and tear for that spot on the sock oh one more thing that I wanted to say about these socks is the heel um this is the heel that was in the pattern and I think it is so beautiful. It's called the Eye of Partridge Heel, and I um, usually do a slip stitch heel flap and gusset, and this is a very similar technique, but you're kind of alternating which, um, which stitches you slip and which you knit. So if you're familiar with doing a heel flap and gusset, it's like instead of making rows, you're almost doing like a checkerboard of your slip stitches, and I love how it came out, especially with all of this being the same color. I feel like it almost looks more, um, more like seamless, like more like a little texture patch instead of like harsh lines right there. Um, yeah, I really like this heel. I could see myself doing this again if I do another sock that is like kind of more delicate like this. Really, really like that. I have, um, I have one more fully finished object, another pair of socks. Surprise, surprise. And it is these. These are um, bamboo pop sock is the yarn. They are self striping, obviously. Um, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna do these super quick. I'm not even gonna worry about matching up the stripes because it doesn't really matter. And then they matched up perfectly. Literally perfectly, like on the heel and everything. I was so pleasantly surprised because I was not worried about it um because it doesn't have a long repeat so I was like they're not gonna look that different even if the stripes are off and I think they'll still be cute but I love how that worked out um I have been really enjoying working with the bamboo pop sock what's really cool is it's a lot more stretchy like the fabric is and maybe the yarn is just stretchier but these have so much give so this 
this sock, I cast it on 48 stitches. And this fits my foot really well. The only thing that doesn't quite fit my foot, and this is for someone with a smaller foot than me, the, um, the cast on edge is not as stretchy as the rest of the sock. So whenever I put this on my leg, I can feel the cast on edge just a little bit. It's not terribly uncomfortable. Um, so if I were to do um, another pair that is this small, um, in the bamboo pop sock, I think I might, um, try to do a different cast on so it's stretchier maybe. Um, but yeah, like the amount of stitches in this is just less and you really get the same size sock because it's so stretchy. It's a, um, bamboo, cotton, and synthetic blend. Um, also what's great is these like this ball of sock yarn was $10 and and from my local yarn store which is awesome and I only used 50 grams so I can make a whole nother pair with this and I um I'm saving all my leftovers and scraps let me show you so like in this jar I've made several pairs now with the bamboo pop sock in this jar I'm saving these are only bamboo pop sock scraps because they're not gonna like mix well with my wool scraps um and i'm planning to do some um shorties for myself i think that'll be really really nice for the summer whenever i don't necessarily want to wear wool socks i think wool shorties would be fine in the summer too um but then because they're shorties and they're in your shoe they don't really have to be like that cute or anything so i'm saving the scraps for like that idea but this one i think i'll be able to use the rest of this pink to make another pair like this or to make a pair of shorties for myself that actually fully matches because I don't think my scrappy shorties I'm not gonna worry about making them match um yeah I'm really I'm really happy with these it's pretty exciting this was a super quick project I finished these like in a few days um also whenever I do a fully vanilla sock I go through those like super quickly um notes in my whips <laughs> about fully vanilla socks and the time that they take <laughs> um yeah so those are my three finished objects these and these and these um let's move on to my works in progress i actually have quite a few i don't normally have this many works in progress this really is a lot for me um i have five works in progress that probably doesn't sound that crazy um if you are a knitter um but this is kind of a lot for me and I'm kind of thinking like I want to wrap some of these up and have a little bit less uh things on the needles um but let me walk you through each one of them show you kind of my plans for each of them um let's let's start with my bigger projects and I'll show you the socks after I have three pairs of socks and two bigger projects so the first one is going to be uh, the same one that I showed last month. Looks a little different though. Um, I actually completely restarted. This is a brioche scarf. And I had cast it on and I had done like an inch or two last month, but um, I just thought it was gonna be too wide. This is already really wide for a scarf. And I know that this grows whenever you block it. Um, it was even wider than this. And I was like, that's just too much. Like, and then I was looking at the um, the photos again. Let me put up a, a photo of the, the pattern that I was going off of. Um, it's like, I don't need it to be that giant. So I restarted with it a little bit uh, narrower. Um, and yeah, I really like this. I was working on it really consistently doing um 30 minutes a day on this while i like had my coffee and everything but once i started my semester i just kind of completely stopped working on it i've picked it up a few times and i still want to work on it and finish it i just think it'll take me getting back into the rhythm of working on it in the morning or something because the brioche takes a little bit of focus. I want to make sure I'm not making mistakes because it is pretty difficult to like fix mistakes if you do something weird with brioche. Um, and 
yeah I think you know my, my classes start pretty early I don't have a lot of time in the morning to like chill and drink my coffee I tend to make a coffee get ready and then bring my coffee with me so it's just not the same so maybe maybe planning to do a little bit in the evening before bed or something like that um that would be nice I could definitely knit on this and watch tv so maybe I could try to make this my tv thing for a little bit or something I'm not sure but I'm happy with the progress I mean I have only been working on this for a month because I started it right at the beginning of January and I mean this is a chunk of a scarf and I'm fine if it takes me a long time to finish this scarf um I really want to have it by like next winter it's the beginning of February here it's very it's pretty cold like this week um it's like unnaturally cold for Texas it's like in the 30s but it won't be like this for long and then it'll be spring um but you know next for next like December I mean it'd be nice to wear this I can definitely have it done by then if I continue to kind of work on it every now and then so I might keep showing this on the podcast I might not if I don't have a lot of um progress on it but I do have another color and so I'm gonna do like a color block thing at some point so that might give it a little bit more like interest I might bring it back out to talk about that but this is kind of a it's just kind of a chill thing um do I have my other color in here I showed it last time um it's like a lighter more variegated uh green color um this yarn by the way is Miss Babs Kyra I think is how you say it it's a sport weight yarn and I am knitting this on a size US 3 needle um so yeah that's about it for this um it's kind of it's just chilling now let me show you something that is not just chilling something that is very exciting i have started a sweater well <laughs> i have plans to start a sweater Butter. I have bought the yarn I have swatched and I am ready I'm ready to start a sweater let me show you what, what we've got so I wanted to do something that is wool um, but more on the affordable side I'm not like a pro sweater knitter the first sweater that I knit was in like a secondhand fabric um, it's got some weird holes and it's I mean I wear it but it's not like great and then I did knit I always like I think that this is my second sweater but really I also knit two other chunky sweaters for my sisters for Christmas one of like one of them came out a little bit cleaner than the other but really this is my fourth sweater yeah both of those were really affordable too I did my sister's sweaters with a chunky um like acrylic yarn i wanted to make sure that they would be able to take care of them um and just yeah like i didn't want to give them something wool that they wouldn't be able to like properly take care of as well as like i didn't know if they would really like wear it because my skills like weren't like amazing it wasn't like a super super nice sweater so i didn't want to like spend a ton of money on the yarn for that either um Anyway, so I thought this is going to be my first maybe maybe really official sweater, so I wanted to get a wool yarn for it, but I was looking for an affordable option and asked for some advice from some other um, knitters, and I decided to go with Knit Picks. Um, so I have purchased Wool of the Andes Sport. This is the color turmeric. Um, I really like this color. I think this is going to be really pretty for fall. I mean, really every season. I wear like a, these like more neutral colors and stuff a lot. Um, the sweater that I am going to knit with this is uh, the Andrea Mowry DRK Everyday Sweater. Um, it's like a really simple um, sport weight like raglan sweater i'll put a picture of her in it up here um so i purchased 
10 balls of this. Um, it seemed like for my size, I would need eight, but then I wanted to get one extra to make sure. And also um, with nitpicks, if you get 10, you get a little bit of a discount. So I went ahead and got 10. If I end up with extra of this, I can make a little hat or something. But yeah, I purchased 10 balls of this from nitpicks. My 10 balls of this were about $37 which that is so good for a sweater quantity. And I do, I like the feel of it. Let me show you my swatch. Um, this is my swatch that I made. So I knitted this like in the round where you pull the yarn around and then cut it. And I blocked it cause I'm such a good knitter. So responsible. My gauge is not right. <laughs> Imagine that. Um, but I'm going to, go up a little bit in size because in the pattern I think she has just a few inches of positive ease and I really prefer um more ease not like fully baggy but I think two to four inches is just not going to cut it for me I'm gonna want like at least six eight inches of positive ease to get like a nice comfy loose fit um also, this wool is not like, I mean, it's soft. I definitely, and I don't have a huge sensitivity to wool, but I'll at least be wearing like a t-shirt under it. If it's cold, probably like a long sleeve, like tighter shirt. Um, so yeah, I think having a little bit more ease for me will be good. So I'm gonna go up. It seems like for my bust size, um, I would have um, wanted to do like the size three. Um, you can see like in the picture of her, it is a little bit, it seems a little bit tight around her chest, not tight, but fitted. Um, and I don't really want that look. I want a little bit more room. So I think I'm gonna do the size five. Um, yeah, that's my plan. Size, size five. I think I have plenty of yarn, especially since I got the extra balls. Um, and she has it a little bit cropped. I'll probably go ahead and do that as well. Like do kind of the length that she recommends and do a little bit of a cropped fit um so yeah i'm really excited about this i really just need to um spend some like focused time looking at the pattern to get it casted on and started because um i want to do i think like a tubular cast on because you you're gonna see the cast on edge right by your neck so i want it to be really neat and really stretchy so i just haven't gotten a chance to sit down and really like get that started and make sure that it looks really good so yeah i'll definitely have some progress on this next month this is kind of my main like big project um i'm really really excited about it so yeah that's my drk everyday sweater it is not yet a sweater but it will be so my next whips are all socks and Really the main reason why I would say I don't normally have five whips is because I have three socks and I would not normally have three socks on the needles, usually one, but I mean, I think now two is more reasonable, having two socks on the needles. Um, so let me show y'all what I've got. Um, this one is a half finished object because I have one sock. Um, <laughs> this is such a weird sock. I um, am knitting these for my sister who um, is planning to wear them to school and they have to wear like plain, like white or navy or like I think gray or something would work too, like socks to school. But then like the foot is going to be like in her shoe. So she wanted something that was white on the top and then had like something fun on the end. And I got these scraps. This is a scrappy sock um, from Bethany, who is a Gypsy Bird Makes here on YouTube. Um, I've met her through um, the Love and Stitches membership. And she so generously like sent me some scraps. Um, and almost all of these are her scraps. Um, this one at the very end is something that I had. Um, but I thought they made a really cool, like little fade almost. It's like a light orange, if it's hard to see it, light orange, light pink. This variegated one with the gold, 
this one which is like a gold orange and then this is a variegated orange that I had um, so I just did like stripes um, what I did with these scraps because I really wanted to use every like every bit of them because they were so small and it was like well it doesn't really matter how thick the the stripes end up being because at the end I knew I was gonna do this orange so if they would have come out I was thinking they would be a little bit smaller than this um, then I, I was thinking I'd have more of the orange at the end, but I mean, obviously this came out fine. What I did was I split up these little balls. Um, so I split them in half, the little scraps, which were probably about like five, five to eight grams each. I, um, I don't have like a Swift. I think this would work well in a Swift, but I, I wrapped them around like a box and counted the wraps and then unwrapped and rewound half and half. So then they were split by yardage basically. Um, so I made, then I had these little balls, two of each color, so I could use half for this sock and I'll use half for the other socks. So I'll have scrappy socks that match, that use every last bit of these four colors, which, I'm really proud of myself for doing this. I'm sure other people have done this, but I I like the way it looks. It's it's weird, but like I feel like it's it works for like the school sock thing and maybe with other colors that like I like more or that are more like intentionally a fade because this is not like a fade set or anything. Um it's just colors that I thought, oh, those kind of look like they could go in order. Um this would be even better um, with something like that. But I have, um, you know, these little guys and then this is the leftover of my orange for the toe um, from a pair of vanilla socks that I had made. So the white um, is Cascade Heritage in the color, Cascade Heritage sock in the color white. Um, and then this one, this one, this one, and this one are scraps from Bethany. And then this guy is a leftover of a Chaos Fiber Co. One of their sock yarns. Oh, the color was called um, Pumpkin Spice, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is one scrappy pair of socks. And I have another scrappy pair of socks on the needles. These are almost done. <laughs> I am calling these my scrappy chaos socks. Um, they're crazy. Um, yeah, so I got uh, this yarn in the mail from Bethany and uh, she had a lot of really bright colors. Um, if you uh, like watch her podcast, she does like knit a lot of like more like really cute, fun, colors which like I am more of like a neutral like person but it's it's great because I, I have so many plans to like knit for others and I do have a lot of friends who really like uh like brighter colors so these are gonna be a gift for a friend who has a birthday I still have plenty of time several weeks but um yeah I like that I I chose to do this uh navy Cascade Heritage as the heel cuff and it's going to be the toe also. I feel like it ties them together really well because I had all these bright scraps. I separated kind of the extra bright ones and then was just kind of pulling them randomly and doing little stripes. Kind of did larger sections for the variegated ones and little small ones of the solid colors. Um, I did like a super long leg because I'm thinking that my friend might want to wear them with like a tall boot or something. Um, but yeah, it's a, kind of another thing that I feel like I can do to try to use every last bit of the scraps. I've already finished up a few of them. Um, I also wanted to like start one and then start the other because I didn't want to like run out of a lot of the colors and then have this one be a lot different. Like they have a lot of similar colors because I was kind of going back and forth. Um, but I'm in like the middle of the foot on both of these. So these will probably be done really soon and then could be gifted to my friend. But I don't, I think I'll probably still have them in my possession for um, the next podcast. I can show you how they turn out. Um, I did 
56 stitches. They have a little bit of a skinnier foot than me and like leg and stuff. So I think 56 will be plenty. I've been doing like 60 stitches for myself. So yeah, so fun. These have been really fun to work on. I haven't been taking them places because it's just like a bunch of little tiny yarn balls, but um, yeah, just kind of working on them while we watch TV and stuff. Super fun, super fun. Scrappy Chaos Socks. Um, okay, one more. This one also has a little bit of a story. I, these are my favorite. If you know me, you know this is my color. This matches literally everything that I wear. <laughs> um, these are gonna be, they're kind of gonna be my birthday socks. My birthday's coming up in a few weeks. Um, I got this yarn for myself after Christmas. It's a um, Malabrigo sock yarn. So it's a no nylon, like just 100% um, superwash merino. Um, but I think it'll be fine. I might be a little careful when I wash these because I, I do just really like them too. And then this is that same navy that was in the Scrappy Chaos socks. It is uh, Cascade Heritage. Um, so these are a little bit extra exciting because I am working on a video. I am going to knit these socks and time myself. I really, I really want to know how long it takes me to knit socks. It is just like, it's a mystery to me because I kind of say, oh, people ask me a lot, like, how long does it actually take you to knit a pair of socks? And I kind of thought maybe like, 10 hours or something I don't spend a ton of like focused time um really just whenever I pick up the gusset and whenever I cast on and then doing the kitchener at the end do I really need to like really focus on it everything else is like kind of mindless I'm doing a little bit of counting or something here and there but not a ton so I don't really realize like how long I'm spending on these so I'm doing a little experiment to see um, how long it takes me to knit a pair of socks. And um, this one I did, I did count my yarn prep in the time because I do hand wind everything because I do not have a um, winder in Swift. So far, if you include yarn prep, I'm just gonna give you all a little peek into this video that's coming up. This has taken me four hours. <laughs> Look at it. Four hours. So this is definitely going to be longer than a 10 hour sock. You'll have to watch that video to find out, but a little preview for the podcast viewers. Um, but I'm, I love the style of this. I love that like the variegated isn't too variegated. It's like not tonal, not variegated, fully. I just like really like this yarn. I really like this color. So this is awesome and I like the feel of it. Um, I was gonna do like more of a boot sock, but um, spring is coming. It was taking me a super long time and I was very conscious of how long it was taking me because I was timing myself. And I like to wear this height. Um, it's like a 40 round um, leg with, um, like sneakers and stuff so I thought I'll do that and then I'll probably get a little bit more use out of them and you'll be able to see them more because I really like the color so that's why I decided to go with a little bit of a shorter leg yeah that is my um finished objects that is my works in progress um I'm really, I'm really happy with how everything is coming out. It's been like kind of encouraging, like thinking about doing the podcast and wanting to like make like interesting stuff and put work in on stuff. Um, I know like some people talk about whenever you do a podcast, you get this um, like more of a need to like finish things. Um, so maybe I am getting that a little bit, but I feel like it's, it, it's not like a pressure it's more of 
at least right now for me like a, a little bit more of like an inspiration and desire to like make more interesting work which is like that's awesome um you should want to make stuff that you love and that is interesting to you and exciting to work on so yeah i'm really happy um with how all of that is going um i do have a few um plans for the near uh future for my knitting so let me talk about that a little bit um of course finishing all three of those socks um the the one that i'm timing will probably take the longest because it just takes me a while because i want to do it whenever i'm fully focused on it if i was timing myself and like watching tv or something sometimes whenever i'm watching something and i'm knitting i'll realize that like oh i didn't actually knit at all for the last like few minutes which is fine obviously it's like just for fun but if i'm timing myself then my timing is gonna be off so um i'm doing that more whenever i'm like maybe listening to my audiobook or something like that so those will probably take a bit longer but I should still be done by next month so finishing all three of those socks I'll probably have more um finished socks um for the next podcast um just because those are all like in progress the scrappy chaos socks are really almost done so yeah the um another thing that I am gonna do I may not finish this project this month but one of my next projects that I'm going to start is some lace socks for a friend of mine um I have this light purple which I balled up this ball came out really pretty um this is a cascade heritage just like <laughs> all the other solid colors um I'm gonna make a pair of lace socks for a friend of mine yeah, I've never made lace socks so if you have um a like tutorial that you like or a pattern that you like um send me send it to me um i'll probably do a lace sock with like a little bit of a ruffle on it let's talk about news um so i am going to have another video coming out soon after this one which is going to be my february studio updates if you are new and you missed my january videos um, I'm planning to every month post a knitting podcast and a monthly studio update. I am a multimedia artist, I am a painter, printmaker, uh, fiber artist, and others, <laughs> and I'm an art student. Um, so if you're interested in learning and talking, chatting about the other stuff that I have going on in my studio, I'm going to have it in a separate video for... Um, the kind of different interest um so i do have a video coming out probably in a few days from now when i'm posting this and i'll be talking about um mending painting um and my classes that i'm in which are ceramics painting photography um so if you're interested in that definitely be on the lookout and uh in other news my Etsy shop is up. I have prints and handmade paper and stationery, um, a few handmade uh, little journals um, up in my Etsy shop. If you're interested in checking that out or if you have an Etsy account, um, you can go follow my shop. In terms of life, uh, school is going pretty well this week um, because of the weather. It's been like or, like freezing temperatures but also raining, which just means not good road conditions so we haven't had school <laughs> it's thursday and i didn't have class tuesday or wednesday and i only have afternoon classes today so i have spent time knitting taking care of house stuff and getting caught up on readings and things for school um but other than that i mean School's really good. I'll talk a little bit more about my projects and stuff in my studio update. Um, and I wanted to also talk about what I have been reading. Um, a lot of people do like a reading, watching, listening um, segment at the end of their podcast. And I, I mean, I, I watch things and I listen to things, but really I do a lot more reading and I did a lot of reading this past month so my plan is to kind of talk about that um so in January I actually finished six books which is a lot for me I 
I'm a, like a pretty big reader, but I kind of go through phases where I'm reading a lot and then I'm not reading that much. And at the end of last year, I really wasn't getting through books very quickly, but I think the beginning of the year got me excited about kind of reading again, um, as well as like, because I joined Love and Stitches and they have a book club. I read the January and the February book club book, club book um, for that. And I really enjoyed those books. So it kind of got me excited about it again too. The first book that I finished, well, the first book that I finished was actually the January Love and Stitches book club book, which was uh, the Lost Apothecary. Um, I listened to it on audiobook. I'll put a picture of the cover up for you because that's the only one that I don't actually have physically in my possession. Um, I enjoyed the audiobook. There were definitely, we, we had the um, book club like discussion about it a few days ago and there were definitely people who did not enjoy it as much as me but, but I loved reading the book. I thought it was super interesting and fun and I'm just like along for the ride. I thought it was really exciting, twisty turny, um, super cool. So I recommend it if you want like something that's fun and interesting. Um, if you're more of a like hypercritical kind of reader and you want something that is more purposeful or believable or something like that, um, you might not like it as much. But I really enjoyed this book. Um, next, I read this book, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, which I had gotten from Book of the Month last year, um, like during the summer, and I never picked it up. And then it got so many like awards and stuff last year. Um, like everyone was talking about how good it is. And I'm like, that book is on my shelf. I have to read it. So I finally picked it up um, like before Christmas um, and I went on a trip for Christmas and was reading this then and then finished it up um, in the last few weeks. Um, it was really good. There was a lot going on, like a lot of characters and it was over a long period of time. So it was kind of a slow burn at times but a super super interesting book um after that i read oh i finished up this book oh well i read this whole book this month um ways of seeing by john berger berger um a few years ago, I had a teacher who was always talking about how we just had to read this book. We just had to. Um, I don't know that I had to read this book. I saw it at a used bookstore um, and I thought, oh, that's that book that Victor was always talking about. Let me pick it up. Um, it was really quick. It's got a lot of pictures, um, but it wasn't life-changing it talked a little bit about like semiotics oil painting tradition um and kind of how a like how a picture is different than like seeing an actual thing that kind of thing so it was like a little bit heady at times also it's pretty dated this book is like from the 70s um so if you're looking for like art an art semiotics kind of book I would probably go for something different, honestly. Um, I finished this one. <laughs> um, we've Got to Try by uh, Betsy O'Rourke, who was running for our governor of Texas. I started this like during his like campaign time, didn't finish it. He lost, sadly. <laughs> and so I just never picked it up again. I was kind of like, sad <laughs> that he lost um but this book is not like about his life or anything it's about um the history of voting rights in texas um so i mean it was interesting but um last semester when i started reading this i was taking um a few different classes that like very directly related to what this book is talking about I mean, if you're a big Beto fan, like me, uh, especially if you maybe don't know a lot about this, the like history of voting rights in Texas, this might be a cool book to read. Um, but yeah, it was pretty quick too. Um, 
The next book I finished was Olga Dies Dreaming. Um, this one I got from Book of the Month last year also, but I ended up listening to most of it on audiobook. Really, did I start it? I think I started it, like started the physical copy and then switched to audiobook because I noticed that it was available and I thought I'm more likely to like get through it um, and I didn't have another like really good audiobook that I wanted to listen to. Um, I really enjoyed um, the audiobook. They had um, different narrators because the different chapters are from different people's point of view. It's really, really interesting. Um, so it's like politics, Puerto Rican like culture, independence, colonization type of stuff. And I, I really liked um, like how much detail it went into with the, the different characters and their like kind of motivation for making these kind of extreme like choices. Um, yeah, I definitely recommend this book really good especially the audiobook I would totally listen to it and the last one that I finished was in five years this is the February book club pick for the love and stitches membership this book was okay it was sad and I mean I can handle some sadness in a book but this one was a little bit overwhelmingly sad um and you could t like so the way it's kind of structured you know what's gonna happen at the end i guess and so it didn't really have the satisfaction of like oh this sadness was worth it i don't know i don't know i did not I did not love it but it was really it was a really easy read it's like a sad romance and that's it that was my six books that I read I do not think I will read another six books in February it's very unlikely um, I don't really have anything in progress right now I had well actually I, I just started um, 56 days by Katherine Ryan Howard I think that's her name I just started that book I've probably read 20 pages so um I'll probably read that this month um so I'm gonna talk about it again on this podcast it'll be a little bit of Alex likes to knit and read because I love whenever people talk about their books on their knitting podcast it makes me happy and I think that the two uh the two hobbies uh, they play together well um so yeah I um I'm planning to read 56 days um pride and prejudice is the next book club pick um so i'll probably read that at some point this month and i also got the audiobook for uh the jeanette mccurdy book i'm glad my mom died so i'll be listening to that for sure um but yeah that's it that's life that's my knitting thank you so much for listening i think this one's gonna be a little bit of a longer one. I need to go back and edit it a little bit, but thank you so much for being here. I I so appreciate everyone who has like watched this and watched my first knitting podcast. It's something that I'm really excited to be doing. So uh, make sure that you like and subscribe if you haven't. And also uh, in the comments, leave me a question, a question about my life, my knitting, anything. Um, I want to try to do like some kind of Q and A, maybe another video, or maybe in my next podcast if it's just a few. Um, but yeah, leave me a question. I'll I'll get back to you. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for being here. I will see you guys soon. Bye.